The movie begins with the SWAT commander named Travis, in bed. Despite the fact that it is almost the New Year's holiday, he is phoned by his supervisor and told to report to the headquarters. Travis and the troops are given the task by his supervisor Ellen when he arrives at the headquarters to assist the DEA in ambushing drug gangs operating out of an abandoned factory. Their only target is the drugs that have been found to be in containers with the Scorpion emblem, which has been confiscated as evidence. They will have two DEA agents accompany them during the operation. They were shown a picture of the container with the Scorpion symbol, by a DEA agent on the way to their destination. It is aimed at that. The SWAT, however, slightly misjudged the task at hand. They were accustomed to ambush missions, after all. They began their operation after eventually arriving at the site. They quickly managed to find the container, after simply taking the guards down. However, the cartel members immediately started attacking them. A shootout left its mark. The SWAT team eventually succeeded in taking down the cartels. Additionally, they detained Diego, a member of the cartel. The two DEA agents attempted to open the container once they believed that everything was under control. They were killed instantly by a missile that was fired at them by a cartel member who they were unaware was still alive. Travis launched an immediate attack on the cartel member, killing him with a single shot. After that, the container was opened by the SWAT team. To their surprise, though, they discovered a man tied inside rather than narcotics. The man, who also has a scorpion tattoo on his back, remained silent, which baffled the SWAT team and made them question who he was. Diego and the unidentified man are subsequently transported to SWAT headquarters by Travis. However, at the headquarters, Alan chastises Travis for stealing him, saying that he ought to have given him to the DEA. Travis countered that by questioning him directly before turning him over, he was trying to learn more about them. The action shifts to a plane that a terrorist leader named Lars and his right-hand lady Phoenix have boarded. Lars was the one who had been holding the enigmatic figure he refers to as the Scorpion. Moments thereafter, Lars learns that Scorpion has been taken into custody in the headquarters of the Settle SWAT. Lars then gave the command for his soldiers to attack the SWAT headquarters out of rage. Travis talks with the IT staff at the corporate office in the meanwhile to find out who Diego and Scorpion are. The IT personnel were able to determine Diego's true identity. He is a lieutenant who joined the Mafia after leaving Hungary. The IT officer, however, was unable to uncover any information about Scorpion. Then Travis questioned Scorpion. Travis has given the task of questioning him to a female subordinate. But Diego chose to slam his own head into the shackle's hook, instead of opening his mouth. In the meanwhile, Scorpion is reluctant to expose his identity. He advises Travis to ask Diego about him. Unfortunately, Diego has already passed away. After that, Travis returns to Scorpion to find out what actually happened. In answer, Scorpion only states that he is being pursued by a foe and that a federal agent will undoubtedly pick him up shortly. Travis, however, has to be aware that the agent is a fake. Travis met two people when he left the room, as expected, claiming to be FBI officers who were picking up Scorpion. Travis questioned them to confirm their identities, but they were unable to respond. They grabbed their weapons as soon as they realized their cover had been compromised. But Travis responded quicker. The other phony agent was cornered and eventually surrendered after Travis managed to murder one of them. The fictitious agent warns that SWAT will suffer consequences if they continue to refuse to turn over Scorpion. As soon as Travis heard it, he went back to get Scorpion, but when he arrived, he saw that Scorpion had already taken off the handcuffs that had been holding him captive. Travis engaged in combat once more. Scorpion proves to be a powerful melee fighter. Travis was not only defeated, but he also managed to take his weapon. Travis' gun was given back to him by Scorpion instead of being shot. Travis was invited to help since he knew Lars would assault with more people. Travis and Ellen then visit Scorpion in his jail to inquire about his identity. At this point, Scorpion makes his identity as a special intelligence operative who has stolen a valuable item worth billions of dollars known. Additionally, he informs them that Lars, the terrorist who has amassed an army and taken over minor nations, is the one who is pursuing them. And he was aware that there must be informants for Lars among the SWAT team. Travis decided to relocate him to a different location so order to prevent further SWAT casualties and to make it impossible for Lars agents to find him there. In the meantime, Lars seeks a hacker's assistance in hacking the CCTV at the Seattle SWAT headquarters in order to learn the identities of all the SWAT personnel stationed there as well as their families. However, they soon discovered Scorpion just as Travis was ready to remove him. Scorpion became aware that Travis was being targeted by a sniper. The automobile transporting the person crashed into the road divider as a result of the ensuing confusion. Then, taking advantage of the circumstance, Lars' men kidnapped Scorpion. However, Scorpion didn't simply allow himself to be hauled away, 
Instead, he broke the chains over his hands and attacked the abductors. Not a single foe was left standing, not even close. The SWAT squad finally acts to assist Travis and Scorpion after realizing what happened to them. The IT officer and Ellen also took action by requesting additional help from a federal organization. Unfortunately, their connection had been compromised, thus it was ineffective. As soon as Lars realized his first attempt had failed terribly, he sent additional troops in the direction of the SWAT headquarters. The SWAT team and Lars's men then engaged in a furious gunfight. They were overpowered by an opponent who outnumbered them. The SWAT team was forced to retreat within the structure. Unfortunately, one of Travis's guys was killed by a barrage of machine gun fire. Travis then gives the command to lower the steel shield to cover all the entrances and windows. But just as they were going to send out a distress call, the power and communication were abruptly cut off. While Lars's men encircled the building from the outside, they were absolutely alone inside. But weirdly, a few seconds later, the phone rang, it was Lars calling to close a transaction. As long as the SWAT team handles the Scorpion, he will stop interfering with them and evacuate his forces. The person who answered the phone, Travis, rejected his offer. Lars revealed his ace. He threatened to target the families of the SWAT squad members if they continued to refuse to give him the Scorpion. In the end, Scorpion promised to leave in 10 minutes, provided that Lars didn't include any members of the SWAT team's family. After accepting the Scorpion's offer, Lars gets ready to pick up the Scorpion with the help of Phoenix. Travis discloses at SWAT headquarters that he has plans to trap Lars and his group rather than giving them Scorpion. In order for his schemes to succeed, he needs Scorpion to pose as a SWAT agent while his jail garb is placed on the deceased agent, the person who was wounded by a machine gun. The enemies must then be drawn in by Scorpion carrying the body out the back entrance. The SWAT squad attacks the enemy once they have been drawn into the building. Lars instantly gave the order to his guys to pick up the Scorpion as soon as the steel cover at the back of the building opened. A flash of light in the form of Morse code then appeared, alerting him to his fallibility. Lars pulled his soldiers away right away at that point. Travis wasn't sure what to make of the terrorists' retreat. Ellen, meantime, hurried in that direction as soon as she noticed the flickering light. Following that, all members of the SWAT squad reassembled with the exception of Ward. Travis then went to find Ward. At this point, it was eventually made known that Ward is a spy for Lars. Ward releases the false FBI agent who was being held, and the two of them go to the basement to switch off the building's locking mechanism. However, Ellen intercepts them before they get there. To divert Ward, the bogus agent reacted swiftly by cracking her neck. He fired at Ellen after taking cover for a moment, then went down the cellar. Travis didn't take long to arrive, and Ellen informed him what had transpired and how Ward had been Lars's inside man the entire time. Ellen and Travis arrived too late in the process. The building's locking mechanism had been disabled by the fictitious FBI agent. The agent and Ellen had a brief altercation. Before Travis kills him with a shot to the back. Terrorists can freely enter this building because the steel shields are no longer there. Whether they like it or not, the SWAT must repel the assailants. They were outnumbered and ultimately had little success. While the rest of the staff attempted to seek refuge in the basement, some of them perished in the firefight. Ellen was regrettably cut off from the gang. Then, as if things couldn't get any worse, she ran into Phoenix. They struggle to outwit one another when Lars enters, knocks Ellen out cold, and then orders Phoenix to get the scorpion right now. Travis and the others who are still attempting to enter the basement eventually encounter the scorpion. He gave the command to duck so that he could shoot Lars' troops standing behind them. Then, Scorpion directs Travis and his squad to a tunnel that leads to the outside. Before Travis's team members departed, Scorpion instructed them to phone for assistance as soon as they were outside. Travis wasn't traveling with them. In order to save Ellen, he and Scorpion enter again. To find her more quickly, they decide to separate. However, they encountered Lars and Phoenix instead of Ellen. Travis had to take on Phoenix, and Scorpion had to take on Lars. After their ammunition ran out, they engaged in hand-to-hand -hand combat. Phoenix was pushed down from the building's top by Travis, but Lars was also murdered by a scorpion. Ellen is still on the ground when Travis finds her. Three of them waited outside for assistance. But at this precise moment, Scorpion removed the microchip from his mouth. Lars was chasing a microchip that is worth billions of dollars and contains sensitive information. Travis received the microchip from Scorpion without hesitation since he trusted him to take good care of it. It turns out, though, that Ellen has been after the secret information stored on the microchip for a long time, to the point where she dispatched a SWAT team to steal the Scorpion from Lars. Ellen pointed her rifle at Travis and, like if she had discovered the right moment, shot Scorpion in the shoulder. He unintentionally lost the microchip from his grasp after avoiding the shot. Then Ellen grabbed the microchip and ran into the woods. Travis followed her in her wake. 
he lost her as soon as he entered the jungle. Later, she surprised him by coming up from behind. After a period of fighting, he seized a gun that was tossed, and when she saw the gun, she gave up. Later, assistance did actually show up. Travis is asked to identify the scorpion body while the police drag Ellen into their car. He examined, but it wasn't a scorpion. Travis nevertheless made the decision to lie so that Scorpion could escape and nobody else would be looking for him. Travis returns home at the end of the movie and celebrates the new year with his family.